Hey, hey, incredible world changers at Causey Coast Vineyard. I hope all you guys are keeping well, that your families are safe and well, and that you're just growing in relationship with God during this time. It's my absolute privilege to be able to read to you guys tonight a story called A Bible for Sudan. This was in 2001 and features a young boy in Sudan called James Jetta and a young girl in America called Kayleen. Kayleen sat in the service that night with her heart welling inside her with a desire to help, to do something, to make a difference for these people the minister was telling her about. But what could a 13 year old girl do? What did she have to give that would make a difference? Kayleen felt helpless against this growing burden inside of her. She is used to praying with her family for those who are persecuted in other countries. And she even prayed for a young man whom they had heard about from Sudan a boy called James Jetta. He had been tortured with fire because he refused to convert to Islam after they had killed his parents and siblings. The more the preacher smoke, spoke, the more Kayleen wanted to act, but what, sh what could she do? The minister continued to talk about the plight of the families in Sudan and what life was like for them. There were fathers and mothers there in their late thirties who had never known a time when their country, even their own village, was not being torn apart because of the civil war. This was between Arab Muslims in the north and black Christians in the south. That had been raging there since the early 1960s. Children there had had to dig foxholes outside their classrooms to hide in, as their schools were often targets of bombing raids, as were hospitals and churches. Through there, especially in the Nuba Mountains, where the fight Fighting is the most intense. There it can get below freezing at night and due to lack of blankets, constant exposure to such conditions often means poor health and little sleep while shivering through the night. Though the land is rich for farming in the south, food is still scarce as army raids often confiscate what is grown or bombs destroy the fields of food. Starvation then is also a problem. Yet, as always in times of war, and persecution, what the Sudanese were most hungry for was God. Because of the war, many missionary groups in other countries had stopped sending people to Sudan because of the danger, and Bibles and other Christian literature were in short supply. Suddenly, Colleen felt a tug of hope in her heart. She looked suddenly at the youth Bible she held in her hands, with all the doodles and the notes she had made in it since she had received it as a Christmas, present some three years earlier when she was 10. She clutched it to her chest as the minister continued to speak. When she heard that a family friend was going to Sudan with VOM workers, she sent the Bible with him. Please give it to someone special, she said. When this friend arrived in Sudan with Colleen's Bible, among many other provisions the team had brought with them, his heart went out to all those he met. Yet, as the days of their visit were coming to a close, he felt a special attachment to one young man who bore the scars of being thrown into a fire when a Muslim reading party had killed his family. He was now living with his grandmother and was attending school, hoping to grow up to be a teacher. The missionary friend gave this young man Kayleen's Bible with some special words of encouragement, and his name was James Jarre. Guys, that's just such an incredible story, a story filled with hope. I want to encourage you guys, just no matter how small or insignificant you feel, your act of kindness or compassion or obedience to God is, it can have incredible life-changing circumstances for somebody else. Never feel that any act of obedience to God is small or insignificant. God takes everything and uses it for his glory. God bless you. Have an amazing weekend and I look forward to seeing you all soon.